Hey guys, let's get more news about Dallas, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Browns get crushing news on David Njoku's injury following loss to Cowboys. The Cleveland Browns got hit with injury amid insult on Sunday, September 8, as David Njoku went down with an ankle problem during the team's blowout home loss to the Dallas Cowboys. Mary Kay Cabot of Cleveland.com reported Monday that the Pro Bowl tight end is week to week with what is likely a high ankle sprain. She added that he will probably miss multiple games as he recovers. He's expected to miss at least a couple of games with the injury, which didn't look good on Sunday night when he hobbled out in a right walking boot, Cabot wrote. Head coach Kevin Stefanski refused to confirm the precise nature of Njoku's injury during a media session Monday. He was also relatively quiet about the team's plans to replace Njoku with a free agent or trade addition. Yeah, working through all those types of things today and tomorrow, Stefanski said. But we have options, and we'll work through them. Behind Njoku on the depth chart is Jordan Akins, who has played in 18 games for the Browns over the past two years and caught 18 passes for 159 yards during that span. Cleveland also had tight ends Blake Whitehart and Cameron Latu on the practice squad as of last week, per Yahoo Sports. Njoku put up career highs of 81 catches, 882 yards and 6 TDs last season, earning his first trip to the Pro Bowl across seven years in the NFL. He had four catches for 44 yards on Sunday prior to sustaining the ankle injury. Njoku's absence looks even more concerning for the Browns, considering how poorly the offense played Sunday against Dallas. Quarterback Deshaun Watson threw for 169 yards, 1 TD, and 2 INTS. The team was able to gain only 54 total yards in the first half with Njoku's help. What's worse, Watson didn't complete a pass for more than six yards downfield at any point in the first two quarters. New wide receiver Jerry Judy played well, hauling in three catches for 25 yards and a score, while Pro Bowl wideout Amari Cooper had just two grabs for 16 yards and dropped what was almost certain to be a touchdown pass in the second half. Cleveland's schedule is manageable, which is a silver lining amid the offense's abysmal performance and Njoku's injury. But even despite the fact that the Browns don't square off against another playoff team from 2023 until they take on the Philadelphia Eagles in Week 6, four of Cleveland's next five games are on the road. If Watson's struggles continue, the Browns may be quick to move to either backup Jameis Winston or second-year player and third-string quarterback Dorian Thompson-Robinson. ESPN's Bill Barnwell laid out the reasoning in an article published Monday. Instead, the Browns seem to be perpetually waiting for a universe in which everything is right and Watson suddenly morphs back into the quarterback they paid so much to acquire, Barnwell wrote. You can only fool the players and fans for so long. Watson has now played 13 games in a Cleveland uniform, and it's becoming more and more clear with each start that this isn't working. Cowboys news, early returns at linebacker, cornerback, could not be better under Mike Zimmer. There is no shortage of confidence, with rookie Kalen Carson being a surprise starter for the Cowboys without Darren Bland. In his NFL debut, rookie cornerback Kalen Carson lived up to the nickname given to him at Wake Forest and was instrumental in restraining the Browns' air attack in the Cowboys' 33-17 opening day win. The dominant Dallas defense limited Cleveland's Deshaun Watson to a meager 3.75 yards per attempt and a 51.1 passer rating on the day, looking nothing like a fifth-round DB making his first pro appearance. Honestly, I didn't know how the first game was going to go, Carson said after the win, but I knew one thing, I wasn't going to come in here scared. The 22-year-old more than held his own despite being matched up against five-time pro bowler Amari Cooper, with Carson holding the former cowboy to just 16 yards and breaking up as many passes, too, as he let Cooper catch. And he nearly came away with two interceptions. I didn't capitalize on my opportunities today, the rookie confessed. I think I played okay, but I've got to capitalize on the opportunities. That's the biggest thing with a Cowboys defense, turnovers. 
It was a long time in the making, but DeMarvian Overshone's much-anticipated debut with the team couldn't have gone better. Overshone had 11 tackles, 6 stops, 1 sack, and 2 quarterback pressures. His sack of Deshaun Watson showed off elite closing speed, which caught the quarterback completely off guard. The speed he showed there was jaw-dropping, and it had people in the NLF community rightfully jumping out of their chairs. After the game, Overshone commented on his spectacular play. As soon as he, Watson, broke the pocket, he was mine, said Overshone, per Cowboys reporter Patrick Walker. He thought he was going to be able to get a throw off when he saw me, but it was too late. I had him. That's an understatement. Speed wasn't the only attribute he was working with on Sunday. Now check out the pure strength shown by Overshone here on this run play. Cowboys received best possible update on Jake Ferguson after scary injury. The Dallas Cowboys steamrolled the Cleveland Browns as road underdogs on Sunday. The 33-17 final score was not an accurate reflection of how lopsided the game was. The Cowboys led 27-3 early in the third quarter and maintained a 24-point advantage until the Browns scored a consolation touchdown in the final minute of regulation. Mike Zimmer's defense turned in an immaculate performance, and Dak Prescott was efficient and surgical in the first half to help Dallas jump out to a multiple-touchdown lead. The only negative takeaway from the game was the injury to tight end Jake Ferguson. Ferguson came up limp after an ugly-looking tackle that saw his left leg pinned underneath a Browns defender. The pro bowler clutched his knee and headed straight to the locker room for further testing. The Cowboys got an encouraging update on Ferguson late Sunday, with reports claiming that Ferguson avoided an ACL injury. Ferguson even expressed optimism about the injury to Prescott before Monday's all-important MRI. Well, Cowboys fans can finally exhale. Ferguson took to social media Monday morning with a message that seems to convey he received good news on his knee. Shortly thereafter, Ian Rappaport reported that Ferguson suffered a sprained MCL and a bone bruise. He is considered week to week. Ferguson will likely miss multiple games, but this update feels like the best possible scenario given how scary the injury looked in real time. Ferguson could hardly put any pressure on the knee and walked to the locker room with an obvious limp. Even though reports claimed Ferguson's ACL was not damaged, a number of other injuries could have ended his season. A torn meniscus has already wiped out the seasons of Vikings rookie quarterback J.J. McCarthy and Panthers star defensive lineman Derek Brown. The Cowboys' tight end room is deep this year, but it features two players who have never appeared in an NFL game, second-year pro John Stevens Jr. and undrafted rookie Brevin Spanford. The other member, 2023 second-round pick Luke Schoonmaker, posted eight catches for 65 yards as a rookie and wasn't targeted at all against the Browns. Stevens missed Sunday's game with a hamstring injury. His status for next week's home opener against the Saints is unclear. If he's unable to go, the Cowboys may have to elevate Princeton Fant from the practice squad. Meanwhile, Schoonmaker and Spanford played just 19 snaps apiece. Ferguson is the clear alpha in the room. He was Prescott's second favorite target last season, behind C.D. Lamb, and saw over 100 targets. He ranked second on the team with 71 catches and 761 receiving yards, and third with five touchdown catches. The Cowboys will miss Ferguson dearly over the next couple of weeks, but the fact he'll be back at all this season is a win. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Jake Ferguson? Leave your opinion in the comments.